Okay, so today's lesson is on spectrophotometry and Beer's Law. Um, so spectrophotometry is a lab technique that's used to um, measure the amount of light or uh, wavelengths of light that a colored sample um, absorbs or transmits. And we use this with solutions to determine um, their concentrations. So we know that many solutions have unique colors so it will absorb or transmit different uh, wavelengths of visible light. Um, we see that with our copper sulfate solution, we have copper, copper ions have a unique blue color. So I'm gonna switch over here real quick to this um, slide. Um, so you guys can see some other solutions that um, we don't always, we haven't necessarily seen in the lab. Um, so we've used copper before. Um, nickel ions have a uh, kind of a greenish blue color. Cobalt is a pink color. Um, you can see the iron two versus the iron three. Iron two is more of a yellow. Iron three is more of an orange. Look down here, the permanganate ion is really pretty. It has like a deep purple color. Um, so let me go back to our notes here. All right, so we know copper is blue. Put that in here. Um, we have nickel that is a green color, kind of a greenish blue. We have um, cobalt. We'll write this one down. That one's pink. And the permanganate ion, which is M M N O four, and that has a negative two charge. That is a deep purple color. Okay, so a lot of the transition metals will um, will have colorful ions. Um, that manganese ion is kind of a purplish ion. So um, Cop, the copper ion is blue is, as uh, visible light reaches those copper ions. Um, they'll absorb um, certain wavelengths of light and then they will transmit that blue or reflect the blue color, which is so they're absorbing all of the other wavelengths of light. Now, the intensity of the solution's color is related to its concentration. So, the more concentrated it is, the darker the color is going to be. And that's just because there are more ions available to absorb that light. So you have a more concentrated solution. It is going, you have more ions there that are absorbing the wavelengths of light, and that's going to make it uh, a darker color. So if you think of like dilute versus concentrated lemonade or Kool-Aid, you know that the Kool-Aid, the more concentrated Kool-Aid or lemonade is going to appear darker. It's absorbing more light and transmitting less. So spectrophotometry is just a lab technique that's used um, to, to study the amount of light that's transmitted or absorbed by matter. It gives us a quantitative method of, um, of instead of just describing it as like lighter or darker, it actually gives us a quantitative method of determining that amount of light. It uses a special piece of equipment called a spectrophotometer. Um, this is what our spectrophotometers look like. And then these little vials right here are plastic. Um, they hold about two and a half or three millil milliliters of liquid. Um, and those are called cuvettes. Okay, so write that down. Um, it measures absorbance or transmittance of light as a function of wavelength. Um, so we will have to choose um, the wavelength of light that passes through um, through our sample. Um, Beer's law is the law that describes the relationship between concentration of a solution and Um, and its absorbance of light. Okay, so the amount of light 
um, that is absorbed is directly proportional to the concentration of the solution. So I want you to go ahead and put this formula on your purple sheet. That big A is for absorbance. The lowercase a is for molar absorptivity. Um, this is a constant value. Um, B is the length of the path is traveled in light by the light as it passes through the sample. That's in centimeters. And then C is for concentration. The lowercase c is for concentration in this formula, and that is moles per liter. Um, the relationship between absorbance and concentration is a directly proportional relationship. So we'll write that it is direct. Okay. Um, or we could say that it is a linear relationship. Um, since A, the absorbance, is a linear function of C, we can use good old slope-intercept formula to get the equation um, from the data that is graphed. And okay. it goes down here a little farther. Um, so we know slope-intercept formula is Y equals MX plus B. Um, so we have absorbance is directly proportional to that concentration where A times B is the slope of the best fit line. So slope is equal to the molar absorptivity and the length of the path in centimeters. So here's an example down here of a Beer's Law plot that was obtained by measuring the absorbance of varying concentrations of standard solutions. So we would know the concentrations of these solutions. We would put them um, one by one in the cuvette, measure the absorbance, and then plot that. And then the slope of this line gets us this constant. Okay. Um, you'll notice that in the formula, every once in a while, you will get um, this intercept here where, um, and that might just be because, you know, it's not crossing perfectly at zero absorbance, at zero concentration. Um, and that can be due to small impurities um, in the um, samples. Um, let's see here. So let's go on to our next page of notes. So we have three methods of finding the concentration of an unknown using spectrophotometry. One is the simple method of graphing. Um, then we can use proportionality or we can use the actual Beer's Law equation. Um, so it is important that you are able to use all three methods. So in the lab, the most common method that's used is by making an, um, a, an absorbance graph. So this is a, um, a graph that was created, that was made, scroll right down here, um, graph that was made by collecting absorbance values of known concentrations. It was plotted and a best fit line was drawn. So then you can use the graph to determine the concentration of a solution. It has an absorbance of 0.25. Okay. So we're going to use um, slope intercept formula where you know, y is equal to mx plus b, where really it's a, which is, um, is right here. We're going to put that 0.25 is equal to m, which is really a times b. So that was the 34. So this right here is the slope. We're going to plug that in right here, the 34. 0.27 times the concentration, which is our unknown, plus 0 0.0032. So we're using our um, slope intercept formula right here. Okay, and so we're going to solve for x, you know, do your subtraction, do your work your algebraic ma magic, and you should get a. Um, a concentration of 0 0.0007 molar. Okay. And if we look here on the line, that makes sense because here would be around 0.25. And if we were just going to go over here and then drop this down, we would be about 
in between 0 0.006 and 0 0.008. Um, so we can use that best fit line to help figure out the concentration of an unknown solution. Okay, so let's go down here to proportionality as another method. Beer's law states that absorption is proportional to concentration. So the absorption of a um, of one sample, you can set this up as a proportion. So A1 over A2 is equal to the concentration of one of solution one over the concentration of solution two. Okay, so we're going to set this up with the concentration of solution one over our, un, our um, I'm sorry, the absorbance of solution one over the absorbance of solution two, 0.36, so that came from up here, is equal to the molarity of solution one, so our known, over the molarity of solution two. This is your favorite mathematical uh, calculation to do, which is cross, multiply, and divide. And you should get 0 0.08 molar. Okay. And then we have one more method, which is down here. And it is just simply using the Beer's Law equation. Seems easy enough. However, Molar absorptivity constant A is often not readily available. Um, so it's a constant that isn't always easy to just look up, okay, because it is dependent upon whatever solvent you're using and um, the amount of um, solute that's in there um, and the path, the path length. Um, so you have um, some variables that go into getting this constant that aren't always real easy to find. Um, but we're going to try this with um, the data that's given to us. We have you know, the absorbance is equal to the molar absorptivity times the path link in centimeters times the concentration. And we're going to find the concentration here. And so we're going to put in um, our absorbance that was collected was 0.652 is equal to the constant 15. And um, then we have times our path length of 1.2. And that is times our concentration of our unknown. And so we'll do our algebra. And um, the molarity you should calculate is 0 0.036 molar. Okay. So to kind of summarize this lesson, um, we are learning a um, lab technique that's used to help to help us determine the molarity of an unknown concentration. Um, and that lab technique is called spectrophotometry. Um, it is based on um, an application of Beer's Law that says that a solution's concentration is directly proportional to its absorbance of light. Okay, And we have Beer's Law equation, but we also have the, the more practical application of it, which is by is graphing and using um, Beer's laws, uh, you know, that relationship between absorbance and concentration, and we'll get that best fit line and use our, um, our slope intercept formula to calculate our unknown um, by getting the absorbance of known concentrations of standard solutions. Okay, we should also be able to use. Um, two other methods of calculating unknown concentration by proportionality um, and also Beer's Law equation direct.